being elected to the U.S. Congress, he served for eight years in the Florida State's House of Representatives. Currently, he serves on the Committees on Homeland Security, Veterans Affairs, and Foreign Affairs. He is deeply concerned about the security of the U.S. and the policies that impact that security. As a result, he has followed the events in Egypt closely and has advocated on behalf of minorities in Egypt and Cops. We welcome here today to look for and looking forward to hear from him. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I'm sorry that I'm uh, running late. Usually it's because I'm Greek. I'm running Greek time. But this time, as you know, uh, we had a very important decision. And uh, we've been uh, in conference. The Republican conference has been meeting. They're still meeting, but I didn't want to keep you waiting. So again, good morning, and thank you for allowing me to speak. And what a blessing to have uh, Cynthia here in the United States. And uh, she, she's just a wonderful, wonderful individual. And I look forward to working with with her for many years. Before I get, begin, I want to take a moment to remember His All Holiness, Pope Shenouda. He was instrumental in this service. He was instrumental, as you know, in the search for mutual understanding among the world's religions. I express my deepest condolences for your loss and pray that a worthy successor will arise, a successor who will protect the oldest Christians in the Middle East and prevent the persecution of religious minorities. As you know, I've worked to condemn violations of religious freedom throughout the world. As a member of the Subcommittee on the Middle East and, of course, in the uh, Religious Freedom Caucus, I I'm alarmed especially at the dwindling number of Christians in the Middle East. A good friend of mine, Carolyn Glick, wrote in the Jerusalem Post in a column uh, uh, this issue. Actually, it's been a couple months. She noted that in Turkey, the Christian population has dwindled from 2 million at the end of World War I to less than 100,000 today. Unacceptable. And there are only 1,200 Greek Orthodox Christians left in Constantinople, a place that refuses to recognize the ecumenical patriarch the nature of our patriarch, my patriarch, uh, Bartholomew. Additionally, the theological school at Halki, a seminary to train Orthodox clergy, has been shut for over, shut down for over 40 years. Again, unacceptable. Uh, and this behavior by the uh, Turkish government must stop. In Iraq, a decade ago, there were 800,000 Christians. Today, there are 150,000 Christians. In Iran, prior to the Islamic Re Revolution, a, uh, Iran's Christians were more or less free to practice their religion. Today, they are executed. What a shame. In Syria, four decades ago, Christians made up nearly half of the population. Today, 4% of Syrians are Christian, and they are suffering currently during a tragic time, of course, as you know, and please include them, I know you will, in their prayer, in your prayers. In Jordan, half a century ago, 18% of the population was Christian. Today, 2% of Jordanians are Christian. And of course, we all know the horrible massacre, persecution of Egyptian cops. I'm sure you have seen it time and time again, just like I have, the massacre, of course, of Christians in Tahrir Square and Masfero, as well as during the holy events such as Christmas Eve Mass. That's why organizations like Coptic Solidarity are so important to remind the world that as we speak here today, Christians in the Middle East are dying or being displaced. We must hold Middle Eastern governments accountable. The right to worship must be protected in the Middle East, starting with Egypt, in order for a free and democratic society to flourish. And Egypt must know that the United States strongly supports the safety of religious minorities. Last year, I called, along with other members, Congressman Pitts, uh, for conditions to be placed on the $1.3 billion in annual aid that we provide Egypt. 
This money has been used by the Egyptian military to persecute and attack Coptic Christians and other religious minorities, and this is unacceptable, ladies and gentlemen. I will continue to call for these conditions as long as the rights of minorities in Egypt are ignored. Egypt's new president and new parliament must understand that the U.S. is watching their actions, and we will not turn a blind eye to the persecution of religious minorities. We will also be watching as the Constitution is written. I have expressed my support in the past for the proposed Bill of Rights that would cement the rise of religious minorities in Egypt, and I express it here again today. And I promise that I will remain vigilant to the plight of the Coptic Christians as Egypt continues its transition. Moving forward, we must continue to work together to support the freedom of religion and expression for all in Egypt. As I'm sure you know, the spokesman to the newly elected Egyptian president said that, the president, that President Morsi would appoint a woman and a Coptic Christian to be uh, co-vice uh, co presidents, a first in Egyptian history. Whether this will take place is yet to be seen, but it does remind us that we must never lose hope that one day Coptic Christians will enjoy equal citizenship in their native country of Egypt. And ladies and gentlemen, nearly every place I go, whether it's in the 9th Congressional District of Florida, how many Floridians do we have here? Uh, wherever I go in the United States, I advocate on your behalf. And we must never give up hope. And uh, again, I'll always be there for you. Thank you very, very much for having me.